learn about renewing your fire is you have to look at what is around you and what's surrounding you, the people that surround you. God puts people in your life and he does it strategically. Even sometimes bad people come in your life and that is still just to be learned as a lesson. So for example, like the friends you have, some people may not believe the way you do and it's not easy for you to talk to them. But my friends aren't really Christian like that, but I am. And I don't care if they're annoyed. I would part seeds in their heart every single day. <laughs> my friend Teddy, she doesn't really believe in God, but I always bother her about Christ and sometimes even felt like I was bothering her for no reason. Yes.
to be strong and courageous. Courage can be by a lot. You need, you need good facts to successfully lead the people. Number two, you need it to believe in God or show it to be with Him. Yes. No, no. The same way we must be strong and courageous. Number one, to follow and obey His words and instructions. Number two, to live a Christian life and not trust in, to not turn away from the word of God. Amen. Number three, to have God to have good success in all we do. Amen. God has commanded us in the same way he commanded Joshua not to do the part from his word. And now we will one more come to you.
where God clearly gives us instructions, confident, determined, and courageous, and to look to Him as our life and our salvation. So it says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Then Joshua commanded the officers of his people, saying, Pass through the camp and command the people, saying, Prepare the provisions for yourselves. For within three days we cross over this Jordan to go into to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. Amen. Amen. So at this point, as Wesley previous, previously said, is that we know uh, Moses led the Israelites for 40 years, and now it's time for Joshua to take over. This is such, such a huge task. Like, how many of us would actually stand up and take that position and lead an army to take people to the promised land? And so, as I was reading this verse, two things stood out. We find God knowing doubt, the doubts and fears of his nervous servant such that he spoke to him three times or more as we read through the chapter, encouraging Joshua to be strong and courageous for the task ahead of him. So firstly, it's in Deuteronomy 21, 7. So in Deuteronomy 31, 7, this is, uh, this is basically an exhortation given to Moses by God. And then it says, Then Moses called Joshua and said to him, In the sight of all of Israel, Be strong and of good courage, for you must go with this people to the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall cause them to inherit it. Amen. And then secondly is in Deuteronomy 68. And that says, do not be afraid, you will not be disgraced again, you will not be humiliated. And then thirdly, we have Joshua 1 verses 9. And that says, do not be afraid or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Wherever you go, yeah. And so here, God, here we see God showing a deeper concern for Joshua. Because as we know in Psalms 27.1, we must remember that the Lord is our light and our salvation. Who shall we fear? He's our strength. He's the strength of our life and, we sh and who shall we be afraid of? Amen. And the second thing that stood out to me was uh, Joshua's obedience and servanthood. Because right after Joshua was assured by God, he then sets out to lead people to a land where Moses couldn't even reach. Hmm. And here we see Joshua setting his eye on God, loving him by obeying his laws. Hmm. And then now we see a change in Joshua. He is now a commander. Hmm. And that's the change that I hope we will see in each other as we continue to grow as a Joshua generation. Hmm. So this is what the Joshua generation is all about. Being able to stand against odds, make a positive impact, by taking extraordinary steps, by accomplishing what the world deems is possible. Why? Because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. And we must never forget to rest in God's promises. He promised to be with us everywhere we go, to be our source of courage, our source of strength. We all, all we have to do now is start the works and, let, and not let anything stop us Amen. from our calling. As a Joshua generation, we need to obey. We need to walk in obedience and love Christ our Savior, as we are told in 1 John 14, 21. And undoubtedly so, this will fall upon you. Those who accept Jesus' commandments and obey them, love Him. God the Father loves those who love Christ, and Christ will love us and reveal Himself to us. And once the Lord reveals Himself to us, the Holy Spirit follows. And as we know in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, for the spirit that God has given us does not make us timid. Instead, the spirit fills us with power, love, and self-control. And I trust that the spirit of the Lord will come upon you and give you the strength and courage you need to take a stand. Amen. Setting yourselves apart as a generation called by God to lead. Amen. And to be bold and to have unwavering loyalty and faith. You are the Joshua generation. Amen. The generation that will inherit the promised land. Amen. The generation for foreigners. Amen. 
that will lead others to the promised land. Mm. We have a call to lead. Many mm. people are waiting. Mm. They're looking for the one to stand up for them. Mm. Mm. They're looking for the one to rescue them from the bondage of slavery in this world. Mm -hmm. They're searching for the one to reestablish their convictions they have lost for a long time. Mm -hmm. Stand before them with character and in truth. So you can be what God created you to be. His grace is sufficient for you. Amen. Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do amazing things among you, as we know from Joshua 3 verse 5. Amen. And so I'd just like everyone to stand up so we can say for short press. <laughs> Father God. Your word that goes out from your mouth will not return to you for it, but will accomplish what you desire and achieve the purpose for, what, for which you have sent it. I pray that these words from you will fall on fertile soil on the precious hearts of your children to start their work. They will begin to bring forth fruit according to your purpose. Preserve the purpose of each young person who is seeking to know your heart now. Holy Spirit, give us wisdom. When the answer is clear, show us direction. When we are lost, provide courage in the face of adversity. And strengthen our bodies when our minds are weary and keep our eyes on you. Clothe us in the arm of God in the name of Jesus Christ. And as Paul said to the Ephesians, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. how wonderful God truly is. Preparing this new service with all, everybody, we had so much fear and worry about it all coming together and just in an order and if we're all in sync. And I was asking God from when we even decided we were going to do this new service, what will I talk about Lord? What? How will this work? Will we be in sync? Will we all be prepared? But what is so awesome, because last night I was speaking with Olu, and I was saying to Olu, I've had all these ideas that God has been given to me little by little, but none of it is coming together. But until I heard everybody speak first, is when I realized God is a God of order, and he has put this together. So I just want to give God the glory, because this is truly all about him. praying when it's hardest to pray. So I think it's something that we can all find as a personal trial in our Christian walk and also something that I've been experiencing over the past couple of months in preparing for the youth service. So I named this praying when it's hardest to pray. I would like to take you to 2 Corinthians 4.17. Our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us eternal glory that far outweighs them all. The Apostle Paul had endured tremendous affliction. He had been imprisoned, beaten and stoned. He had been shipwrecked three times. He had often been left hungry, thirsty and cold. Yet he considered all these massive troubles weightless because he was comparing them with the eternal glory. I want you to understand that God is training you to view your problems from the same perspective he taught the Apostle Paul, and that is to look at the eternal glory. My theme that I'm going to run through, I'm going to go through a few points with you, and I want you to think of if you were the Apostle Paul, if you could apply yourself the same way the Apostle Paul did to his situation. The first one, what you focus on in life expands. The Apostle Paul, we know he was beaten, he was left hungry, he was left thirsty. I know today I had to eat before I came here because I wouldn't have been able to pray properly. I would have felt weak, I would have felt tired. But what if I was like the Apostle Paul? What if you was like the Apostle Paul? And what you focused on was the eternal glory and not the problem that you are being afflicted by. We've been told that what we focus on in life expands. But are you focusing on what is front, in front of you, what the world is showing you, or are you focusing on the promise of God that he has stored an eternal glory for us? When we fail a lesson in life, we get to take it again. Once we have learned, we move on to the next one. 
We all go through lessons. We learn at different stages. We learn different ways. The Apostle Paul, it said he had been imprisoned. He had been beaten and he had been stoned. That's already three indications where he maybe had felt like he had felt, but not once did he take his sight of the eternal glory that God promises for him and the same glory he promises for us. He was also hungry, thirsty and cold. Clearly, God is showing us here that it wasn't maybe the Apostle Paul, but what he was showing us, if we could be like him, if we could fail three times, be left hungry, be left thirsty and be left cold, but still focused and then all of the problems we are facing, would you then look at the lesson that you're learning again differently? Yes. My next subject is growth is only more painful if we resist it. The Apostle Paul was left hungry, he was left thirsty, and he was left cold. If I was left hungry, if I was left thirsty, and I was left cold, and I tried to resist what was happening to me during that time, could I have been like the Apostle Paul and had await the situation? Yes, I could have, because through Christ he strengthens me. The Apostle Paul said it was weightless because he was comparing his troubles with the eternal glory that God has promised him. What if we was to look at things from an eternal perspective? In our times of hunger, thirst and cold, loneliness, despair, even when we're empty, what if we was to focus like the Apostle Paul did on the eternal glory? If we was to resist someone giving us something, it's only more painful, right? If someone is pulling at me from my left side and I'm pulling more to my right side, does it not make sense for me to follow them left so it's more, less painful for me? The focus is, it will be less painful if we focus on the eternal glory. Life prepares you to download information at different times. Whether we want to believe it or not, because we are children of Christ, we are all going through different problems at the moment. We are all facing different troubles, adversities. But our weight is all the same if we focus on the weight that God gives us, which is weightless. We can all deal with our problems. We will see someone as worse, we will see our own as worse. Many times, we believe our own problem is worse than our neighbour. But at the end of the day, when God is your neighbour, how can your problem be of heavy weight to you? What I want to encourage you is your transformation alters your circumstances. What Paul, the Apostle Paul done was he altered, he transformed his perspective. He didn't look at the weight of what he was dealing with. He didn't look at the hunger. He didn't look at the first. But he altered his perspective to focus on the eternal glory. When he done that, that was when things started to happen for Paul. But it's because we've been focusing on the weight of our problem and not the weight that God lifts from us. That is the reason we are still in our problems and in our adversity. I want to encourage you that changing your cities will attract the same situation unless you deal with the problem in the city where it began. Amen. To remind you, your light and all your momentary troubles are achieving you for eternal glory that far outweighs them all. If we change cities, surely the problem will follow you into that same city unless you deal with it in the city you began. Right? Because how can we move cities and expect that the, the problem does not follow us? We're spiritual beings. So does that mean if I go to Spain, my body of Christ is left in London, but in Spain I'm a physical being? No, I'm taking Jesus with me to Spain. The same way the enemy will follow you if you go to Spain with that problem. Your problem will still be in Spain. But unless you alter your perspective, the way that you are viewing your situation, that is only when your situation will change. Amen. So to encourage you, changing your address will not fix the problem. Changing your mindset will. Amen. If you focus on the eternal glory, the problems that you have been dealing with become weightless. My, I don't know how you describe it when you give an example, but I'm just going to say my example. If I was to carry pebbles in my left hand, I'm pretty sure here we could all carry a pebble, a pebble that we find at the beach, as a problem. So there's three situations. He was, left, he was left hungry, he was left thirsty, and he was left cold. So we can all carry the weight of a pebble. Where hung, where we, we've been left hungry. So at this point, the weight of a pebble will compare it to one burden. It's one burden we can all carry, right? Because we're human, we think that we can carry our burdens. 
But then we take on the pebble and the brick. So this is now one burden plus another burden. We've been hungry, we've been left thirsty. So we're now trying to carry a weight of a pebble and a brick. I'm sure the younger generation could carry a pebble, but maybe giving them a brick will be a bit too much to carry. But now what if I gave you the pebble, the brick and a boulder? Could many of us in here carry a boulder? I'm pretty sure I couldn't carry it. But what God is reminding us is there, will, they have, there can be three stages, there can be many more. But the focus is that leaning on him, the situation becomes weightless. The pebble could represent being hungry. The brick could represent being thirsty. But could many of you take the third burden of the boulder and be left cold? Not many of us could take it. But Jesus reminds us that coming to him, conforming in him, it makes all of these situations that we're dealing with become weightless. So what I want you to do is evaluate how are you handling the adversities in your life? Are you handling them because at the moment they seem like they're at the stage of a pebble? Are you handling them with your partner, your neighbour, because that's who you've led upon? So now you're handling a pebble and a brick. But are you handling a pebble, a brick and a boulder? It's too much for you to carry. The Lord has come to tell you that when you seek him, he, these situations become weightless. Amen. I know my prayer this morning when I woke up, when the Lord laid this in my heart was, Lord, let me be like the Apostle Paul. Let me focus on your eternal glory. When, let me not wait for the weight to be too much. I don't want to get to a boulder. When I have a pebble, I want to give the pebble to God and say, Lord, I'm not taking no more weight. Because what I'm focusing on is your greater and bigger picture. Amen. I just want to thank God for giving me this word. you all to be encouraged and give a warm welcome to Spurgeon as we talk about the breakthrough of the Joshua generation. I honestly don't want to say that because literally from the first person to Lydia is what I prepared as well. <laughs> and you will see that as I go through. <laughs> he just said, God is up to something. Amen. It has just started, and how everyone has connected. I'm telling you. <laughs> I was just there seated. I'm taking notes, and I'm like, I already have this one. <laughs> Even the scriptures. I really have it. You know, we thank God. Amen. Um, I like that pastor leadership of the church for giving us this opportunity as we well. take up this Sunday and above all like thank God for you are, as you can see we're on fire. Amen. 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 The church generation we're preparing to take over. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Let us open in prayer. Right, thank you for this opportunity to fellowship. And now ask all God that you anoint my lips. I may speak only that which you desire for me to speak. And that Lord, you may, Holy Spirit, may complete the hearts of the people to turn to you once again. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's just open up my books to um, Exodus 33, verse 11. My words. And the Lord spoke unto Moses face to face as a man speaks unto his friend and he turned again into the camp but his servant Joshua the son of Nun a young man departed not out of the tabernacle let's go to our numbers 27 verse 15 to 23 Bible reads and Moses spoke unto the Lord saying let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation, which may go out before them, and which may go in before them, and which may lead them out, and which may bring them in. Let the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the spirit, and lay your hand upon him, and set him before Eliezer, the priest, and before all the congregation, and give him a charge in their sight. And thou shalt put some of your honor upon him, that all the congregation of the church of Israel may be obedient. 
and he shall stand before Eliezer the, the priest, who shall ask counsel for him after the judgment of Urim before the Lord at his word. Before the Lord. At his word shall they go out, and at his word they shall come in. Both he and all the children of Israel with him, even all the congregation. And Moses did as the Lord commanded him. And he took Joshua and set him before Eliezer the priest and before all the congregation. And he laid his hands upon him and gave him a charge as the Lord commanded by the hand of Moses. Amen. 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 I'll be talking to you about, the, about Joshua's break. But first of all, I'd like to give you a background of the Joshua generation. For some of you might be thinking, what's this Joshua generation? How did it start? Where did it come from? Well, the Joshua generation um, is a good idea. In the year 2002, Bishop Macando, the founder of Fred of Life, um, was given a word by God that revival will come through the youth. That Joshua shall be raised from the church and okay. will go out and turn the world upside down. Amen. So we as a Joshua generation are on that assignment. Amen. Amen. So Joshua took over from Moses and possessed the land. We as well are on such an assignment to possess Amen. this land and the land we're going to take. Who was Joshua? As I read from the script from the scriptures. Joshua was set apart by God to take over from Moses. This was a man who followed after Moses, who submitted to the leadership of Moses. And God saw this. Okay? When Moses knew that, okay, time is coming, I'm old, my time. Is and God said, no, look, there's this guy who's been following you, who's been serving you, who's submitted. And said, you lay your hand upon him. What you have, what I put upon him, you put upon him, he's taking over. Amen. And that's how Joshua came about. Mm -hmm. To begin to be trained and begin to uh, prepare to take over from Moses. Mm -hmm. And then now, we see him living a life of breakthrough from the from first to the end. Amen. 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 Now what is this breakthrough? Breakthrough is um, major progress. Breakthrough is um, overcoming an obstacle forcefully. Okay? You cannot have breakthrough without opposition. Okay? Before you break through anything, there has to be opposition. So when, when you encounter an opposition, when you're faced with troubles and you see, okay, there's no way out, that's the right time for your breakthrough. Without opposition, there's no breaking through. Amen. Amen. And now my first point. Access to breakthrough. Um, the first scripture I read, Exodus 3, verse 11, we see Moses and Joshua spending time in God's presence praying. Amen. Mm -hmm. But then, after Moses is done, he leaves. Joshua could have left as well and said, Oh, my leader is going, he's done praying. I'm not going. But this man stayed in the presence of God, he stayed in the tabernacle continue spending time with God. This was the first access to break to had. This was a man who loved God. This was a man who had a relationship with God. No matter what happened around him, no matter the levels of um, his leader saying, okay, I'm done, let me go. This man still sought more of God. Okay, he knew this is just between me and God. So for anyone's access to breakthroughs to manifest, the first thing is you need a relationship with God. There is nothing you can do without God. John 15 verse 5 tells us, Jesus says, apart from me you can do nothing. Okay. John 15 verse 4 tells us, tells us, abide in me and I in you. Okay. As the branch has to abide in the vine. Amen. Amen. So, without God, there is no access to break. That's right. Without God, there is no victory over whatever you are facing right now. Amen. Amen. The second thing is, we see um, Joshua's level of service. I think um, Jawanzi talked about submission and servanthood for sending uh, being strong and courageous. Mm -hmm. Joshua um, was a man who 
submitted to Moses, okay, and was willing to serve as well. We see this in Exodus 17, when Moses calls Joshua. The first attack what Joshua had was to choose a few men to face the Amalekites who had brought what? Opposition. Okay? They came against the Israelites and Joshua sent them. Moses told Joshua, choose a few men that you're going to go up against the Amalekites. And for sure, he chose them and he broke through once they overcame that opposition of the Amalekites. Okay? He would have easily said, ah, Amalekites, yeah, I've never fought a war. <laughs> this was his first war. Mm. He would have said, ah, why don't you get some more experienced people? I mean, people, these, they are like 60, 70 old guys who are more experienced and they'll know, okay, yeah, this guy should raise up and good warriors and go fight. Mm. But Moses is this guy, this is the one. He chose, and Joshua submits to that. Amen. The same way, a few Sundays ago, Pastor told us about David's breakthrough. He said, when David broke through, this was a man who came and submitted to his father and was willing to serve. Amen. 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 There was opposition from the land and he broke through. And women started singing, David has slain his 10,000. So his thousand weeks or so, women on the sing, they broke through this for David. <laughs> so anyway, going further on, we see Joshua living a life of submission and service. We see Joshua living a life of sacrifice as well. I mean, this is a youth who's spending his time with God. Okay, today with all these entertainments and all these distractions, there are very few who are willing to sacrifice time away from that to spend time with God. I thank God our youth, the church of this church, are here with us to spend time in God's presence. Because Breakthrough is your level of sacrifice, okay, in the presence of God. The secret to your breakthrough is how much you're willing to give up everything that is yours to gain all that's God's. Amen. Amen. Because when when we see Joshua um, sacrificing time away from his friends, sacrificing time um, away from family, sacrificing. Um, maybe a, a meal, lunch, or breakfast, whatever time he was in the tabernacle, we see him being prepared, being prepared, being trained, being brought up in the presence of God. I mean, the presence of God is the training place. Amen. Okay? For the school of life, the presence of God is your gym. For an athlete, the way they love the gym, the way they love training, for us as the Joshua generation, for us as children of God, the presence of God is our gym. Yeah. And the final one is um, being strong and courageous. We are told that um, Joshua was told to be strong and courageous three, four, five times. In Deuteronomy, two, three times to. Joshua 1, verse 6 to 9, he's told again, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous, be strong and courageous. I believe, even though from his first task, where he had a few people who brought him up, um, who followed him to overcome the Amalekites, now he had, he had come to a point where the responsibility would be greater, the wars would be more, it's not just the Amalekites, it's not just Og and these other kings as um, Bashar. Now he's facing maybe five kings at once, as we see in Joshua and God. Now he's facing greater armies. Okay? And he knows this that now there's more people as well relying on him. And God sees that this guy, even though he's had so much battles and he has overcome, he still needs to carry. He still tells him, be strong and carry it. I am in. Be strong and courageous, you will possess the land I will give you. Be strong and courageous, you will give the inheritance you will possess to you. Okay? So, strength and courage is not, not, is not your ability in yourself. Strength and courage is your ability in God. Okay? Strength and courage is giving up all that you are for God to use you to do all that He wants. Okay? There is nothing that man can do. 
effectively without God. Amen. Okay. Everything in Solomon tells us in Ecclesiastes, it is vanity. This I read another the son found that it is vanity. The one thing that stands is your relationship with God. Amen. 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 Second point for well. Joshua's breakthrough. Joshua, as I said, faced opposition. Okay. He was moving now to say, now I'm taking over from Moses. Now I'm breaking through. Out of a few men, now thousands of Israelites. But still, as Chiwe taught us, he continued to trust God and pray. Okay. He continued to say, even though I'm here with a few people, I will still pray and trust God. Now that I'm here, more responsibility, higher promotion, I will still pray and trust God. Okay. Joshua's breakthrough, his essence of that breakthrough was, as I've completely and repeatedly said, relationship with God. The value he placed on spending time with God from the first point he said in Exodus, in Exodus 33 verse 11 to when he's dying in Joshua 24 he tells them serve who you wish gods of this, gods of that, idolatry and this but as for me and my house we shall serve God. Amen. 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 Amen so his breakthrough we see is a consistent relationship with God Amen. from start to finish his breakthrough is okay here I am, as a youth, I will trust God. Here I am, 110 years old, still I will trust God. Here I am, 110 years, I will still trust God. Even in his dying breath, the first, the last words, he still says, trust God, trust God. And finally, the evidence of breakthrough. What we see happening, in the life of Joshua is the manifestation of God's promises physically. Amen. Amen. This man invests spiritually in spending time with God. He invests spiritually in building his life with God. And, in, in, and his breakthrough manifests. And the evidence we see is every battle he wins. Amen. Okay? Every, op every opposition he overcomes. Amen. That is a manifestation of God's promises physically. Because when he was set up with the scripture for in numbers, God was God tells him, Moses tells him, this is what God says, you are being raised, you are the one who's going to possess the land. And we see that Jericho falls. Um Canaan is, is, is taken up and he ushers the Israelites into the promised land. Amen. 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 We see the first thing, the evidence is the manifestation physically of God's promises. What are you trusting God for? What has been tiring? What has taken long to see in your life, isn't it? Can you trace it back to how much you're spending in God's presence? Okay. Can you take it, take it back? How much have you trusted God for that thing you believe in? How much have you depended upon God? Huh? Because the thing is, if you're not going to invest time with God, if you're not going to Prioritize time with God. If you're not going to prioritize relationship, prioritize um, desiring and seeking Him, it will be hard for you to see the manifestation of His promise. Focus. Because the thing is, once you are spending time with God, He's focusing you on the promises. Because whether when you are described, even as He told us, when Paul is facing the weight, the troubles, His focus is still on the glory. Why? Because the promises of God that daily have been revealed to him as he spends time with God. Amen. Amen. The second thing is, and final thing is, the victorious living Joshua enjoyed. This man was possessing every nation that, he, that God promised him. This man was taking over. I mean, when, history, when you look back through history and you learn of um, Julius Caesar with his Roman Empire, um, Changes gone with his empire. Um, Napoleon. Napoleon. Yes, Napoleon. You mean Alexander the Great? All these. You see them possessing lands. You see them.
person have taken over. But then they are wiped out. Yes. Huh? Yes. So look at the Israelites. Amen. Amen. Have you seen that? Can you compare? Can you see what I'm going to this? Yes. Look at the Israelites. Look at the land God promised them. And how much, even now, it still stands. Amen. 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 And as I conclude, what is it you're believing for? Your breakthrough, um, whatever open door you've been praying for, and nothing is materializing. Spend time with God. That's my encouragement. Joshua's life for breakthrough was a life for endless and God. Joshua's life for breakthrough was a life for complete submitted. There is nothing we can do. Once our lives are Amen. 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 To all of look to you for all and you alone in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this word. Thank you, Lord, and Lord. People may begin to testify once they go out of this place. That Lord, you may be with us and keep us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen.
last ten pounds, and um, she gave it to the church, and she had nothing to eat, nothing like that. By the time she got home, she opened her Bible, and she saw a hundred pounds in there. So it just shows how God can bless you and how God works in His name. Very much. Thank you.